Hi everybody and welcome to Fantasy Picks. My name is Sophie Walker and this is Kit Alexander. We're here to hopefully help you out with your team of six on who to pick this week. But first, let's talk about last week in Qatar. Now, I was going to try and get the winner on, Rosner, but actually there is a winner in the room right now, isn't there, Kit? Uh, yeah, I, I had Rosner, picked him last week. Uh, so that's back-to-back -back weeks where we've uh, spoken about the winner of that event in these previews. You picking Colin Morikawa um, a couple of weeks ago for the uh, WGC. So nice little run we're on. Was very happy to see that. Um, going into the weekend, I wasn't as optimistic. Three players missed the cut, including my captain, Kurt Zier, after being seven under through 13 and then missing the cut painfully. Um, but yeah, had Rosner in the team, picked him. He looks an absolute stud now at that level, this sort of mid-level European tour event. Uh, quickest Frenchman to two European tour wins in just his 29th start. So uh, yeah, I was shouting we very loudly at the TV as that 60-foot bomb dropped in on 18. Oh, I mean, wasn't it? I think after kind of 12 holes on Sunday, there was a at six of them in the mix wasn't there and somebody needed to step out of the shadows as such and what did he say I, I hadn't hold much today and then the next thing you know he drops an absolute bomb on the 18th to, to clinch it um yeah I think we both got a bit stung didn't we with a I had three make the cut and three miss the cut the draw that was that was a big. I mean, they they showed the difference. I think on the European tour, how, how big it was. But it was a tough Friday, wasn't it, out there? Yeah, I mean, once the wind got up and you could see it just spiraled for people. We've mentioned Kurt Zier, but once that momentum turns, it's such a big thing in sport. That word momentum, it's so hard to get it back once you get on a bogey train. Um, and they just got stung. I mean, on the Sunday, you mentioned, yeah, through 12 holes, there were sort of a lot of people in contention and people have made their little runs. And then as we often see on a Sunday, you're going into the back nine, the back six, and things got a little bit tight. And you need someone that's going to step up and make that big shot at the big moment to separate themselves. And often in these kind of European tour events, there are guys there contending who haven't won before or don't have a huge amount of experience. Last week, you mentioned you'd favoured picking guys that had won previously on the European tour in your team. And that proved to be the case with Rosner. Someone that had won before was able to find that extra shot. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. We see that a lot in that sort of size of European tour event. There's everyone jostling for position. Then you get to the back nine. It gets very tight. And often it's the player with the experience of getting it done before, even if it is only once, who finds that moment to get the job done when it could have been any one of four, five, six, seven players. It's the previous winners that often rise to the top. Yeah, you look at Guilio Migalozzi, Migalozzi he was, yeah. he actually said, didn't he, I like it when, when I'm on TV, when or everyone's watching me. And uh, he's, he's that type of player. He made a really good run and he actually seems to get better when he's up there he's a player that I don't know if you're looking at for this week but he, he's kind of all or nothing I feel like if he's not in contention he, he's not bothered but once he gets there he, he takes a chance so team wise I didn't have the greatest greatest I only got 115 points uh, my captain made the cut and Sullivan was the wrong side of the draw um, and then we got the U draw, which meant it was the wrong side of the draw again because he played later in the afternoon. So, yeah, I had a bit of trouble. I had thought Mike Lorenzo Vera was going to be in my team. He wasn't. He pulled out and I just quickly just put Laurie Cantor in with not thinking too much into it. And actually, if I'd have checked the weather, which I always did when I played on tour, I wouldn't have had him in because he was the wrong side of the draw. Um, but you did. You did a lot better, didn't you? Yeah, I did okay. 422 points. So Rosner winning, of course, Paisley seventh and Peters, I think it was 13th in the end for him um, of my three that made the cut. Obviously, always disappointing when your captain doesn't make it through. That's going to hurt a little bit, um, but can't complain. Had the winner in my six. So pleased. In terms of the global leaderboard, the, the best team of the week was Philippe Chevrel's at 917 points he got. Um, Chevrel, Philippe, French, 
guess what? Captain Rosner. So um, yeah, he, um, he he did good there, didn't he? Really good performance. If you can get the winner and captain in, we haven't had that yet, Kit have we? That is what that is our next tick that we need to put in the box. But really good week there, and I think this these next few weeks you can really start separating yourself. So going on to this week, we're at the magical Kenya Open. I don't know too, I've been to Kenya actually, but we didn't go to that venue. So I didn't know too much about it. So I thought I better ask somebody who does. So I've got a sneaky interview with Iona Stevens coming up now. So I thought to myself, who can I speak to about the next few weeks on the European tour? And Iona Stephen was the one, having spent a fair bit of time in Kenya the past few weeks. But firstly, <laughs> Iona... You're in Qatar, aren't you? How's this week been? It's been a great week, Sophie. You can probably see the Doha skyline behind me. Um, it's about quarter to seven here and the crew are all flying out tonight, but it's been an amazing week. Um, some great golf on display. All in all, tough test for the guys, tough test for the on-coursers. We've walked about 12 kilometres each day. It's a massive golf course, Economic City, and you know, huge greens and it played quite linksy, not only because there was winds of up to 30 miles an hour on Friday and Saturday, but really tight lies, lots of undulations in the fairways and the greens and 91 bunkers on that golf course. So it was a stern test. But it's been a cracking week. It was a good finish, wasn't it? So exciting. Antoine Rosner, first yeah. French winner of the commercial bank Qatar masters and I think he's a rising star to be honest it's only his second full year on the tour um already two wins under his belt so yeah thrilling finish um in the end we were wondering if it was going to be a four-man playoff we thought what's going to happen um and he hadn't really hold any putts all day you know nobody saw that coming but there's been some unbelievable putts hold on that 18th green like Jorge Campillo last year draining putts for fun on on the greens out there and yeah epic finish to the tournament yeah on course commentary in the wind is never easy and when you don't know who's going to win as well you're running around like a headless chicken I thought you did a very good job so like oh, you said you. you're going over to Kenya aren't you so you spent a little bit of time over there recently yeah I've been there for a few weeks and um it's probably my third trip to Kenya. Um, I've never, I've not played a huge amount of golf there. I usually stick to the kite surfing and the, and the water sports. But this time around, um, I did play a little bit of golf and I went down to Karen and, well, I'm a, I'm a real social golfer these days. I went down one day and played the front nine and then I went about a week later and played the back nine. <laughs> so I've seen it um, up close and in person and it's a beautiful part of the world and, the Karen Country Club is going to be a great venue. I think that it's a really nice, relaxed atmosphere. Um, so I hope that the players really enjoy it. Beautiful conditions. You know, they're just coming out of the tail end of summer in, in Kenya. Um, so temperatures will be around 28, 29 degrees Celsius. Um, mm. The course itself is very tree-lined and it's tight. So... And it's not particularly long. I think it stretches out to about six, nine. Um, I reckon it will play a par 71. I, I wasn't there last year. Or in fact, no one was there last year because it was cancelled. But um, the previous year. Um, and so I haven't seen the men take on the course. But from what I've seen, it's a very tight course. Um, Kukuyu grass is what exists there, which is very sticky. So it suits a player that, is prepared to clip it off the top. You can't be chipping and running and digging it in too steep around the course. You've got to be able to get, you know, the lob wedge out and um, feel comfortable with that kind of that kind of shot where you're clipping it off the top and really keeping the sole of the club in play. Uh, the greens are a little bit uneven in places, to be honest. Um, they've been doing quite a lot of work on the course and the 11th green which might not be the 11th green for the tournament because I know they changed the order of the course for the when the guys come, but 
Traditionally, the 11th green has been totally redone. Um, so that will be a very fresh green. Um, so yeah, I think um, there'll, there'll be a mental test involved because of that aspect of things where it's maybe you feel like you've got, you know, you, those sort of six foot parts, you might miss one if it dives left because it's a wee bit uneven and that will test people's mentality. So I think there's going to be a lot going on. So you're saying somebody that is a good chipper, so we won't be seeing many people like playing the traditional, like the putting from off the greens or anything like that. So, so oh, I was thinking more like a South African type golfer, you know, that they're very comfortable on, on that grass. Um, totally. Tree line, and, and tree lines, so kind of strokes gained off the tee needs to be, so obviously if you want to hit it long, but straight as well. So that type of player. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think the South Africans will feel very comfortable around there. Um, I think, you know, it's also at altitude, which is worth noting. It's 1,500 metres above sea level. So what's that? About 5,000 feet. So that'll be a 10% difference in terms of the distance. So a bit of calculation going on in the brain there. And that's got, you know, maybe a little bit of experience coming in there. Um, and the wind can pick up, although it's tree lined, you do, you do get windy conditions in Nairobi. So I don't know, maybe like a Justin Harding that, um, you know, good iron player that can control it around a course like that, used to that kind of grass. I mean, Guido Migliozzi just shot six under par today in Doha. He's the defending champion, so he'll be feeling pretty good going in to defend his title. But yeah, it's got to be, it doesn't need to be a long hitter. Someone who can hit it straight and someone who's got a good mental attitude is prepared to ride the rough with a smooth and good around the greens. Right. So the European tour team have a fantasy team themselves, don't you? So this mm. week in Qatar, I heard Tony Johnson <laughs> have Brandon Stone as the captain. Did you get a pick, Iona? I did get a pick, yeah, and I I got absolutely ruined on air today because I let the team down, as did uh, Johnny Morgan. But I picked Stephen Gallagher. Heart overhead, Scottish. No, I, honestly, I know that you would think that, but he did really well in Saudi. It's a very windy course. Yeah. I spoke to him at the start of the week, and he was hitting it brilliantly. Um, I thought he's he's on a rising form and this scots do well in in doha and there's scots everywhere in qatar you know you can't you can't turn a corner without bumping into one and i think that it played linksy windy i thought it's got to be a scottish person that's going to come out on top this week and i mean it was a frenchman so it's close enough <laughs> yeah i think if you're the wrong side of the drawer in qatar you know yeah it was tough who would you be thinking of for this week? You're going to get a pick this week. Obviously, you're probably not even thinking about it, but just off the top of your head right now, if I had to put you on the spot. Well, I haven't actually seen the field, um, but oh, I, I think your shout with a South African player is a good one. Uh, Brandon Stone had a good week this week. Um, but I'd, I'd say, it, you know, the obvious pick's obviously going to be Guido because he's, yep. he obviously likes that course. He's in great form and his short game has been unbelievable. But if Justin, Justin Harding's in the field, then I'll go for Justin Harding. He is in the field. So yeah. We'll, he is. Yeah. So that'll be your little one for, for now. And then we'll obviously <laughs> see what you end up picking towards the end of the week. Because yeah. I'd like to have a wee, a wee swatch yeah. at the field before I get my, my official pick. I think so, because you don't want to be getting hammered again, do you? You need to you need to pull your <laughs> finger out. I, I know that um yeah, Kit won this week, so he'll be going on about that for a good week. So I this is why really he's not on this call because I wanted you to mention because I needed to get some. <laughs> well, he added. called the winner, like called the winner yeah. out. He called the winner. Lovely. Yeah, very well played. I didn't put him in my team, so that was a bit gutting. But this yeah. week, I, I think um, with this bit of inside information, look out, Kit. Right. Well, thank Maybe. you so much, mate. Uh, much appreciated. Have a really safe flight to Qatar and have a good... Will you be in Kenya for two weeks? Yeah, doing the two weeks back to back. So by the time the second week comes around, then you can call me up and I'll really know the golf course. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> Maybe I'm a week early. Right, speak to you soon. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so thanks, mate. So, Kit, what did you think to that? Bit of insight from my owner. Yeah, really interesting. Obviously, she mentioned it's tree-lined. It is pretty short. It is under 7,000 yards in a past 71. You don't get many top-level tournaments held on courses under 7,000 yards, but the wind could be a factor. So listening to everything Iona said there, which offered some fantastic insight, and looking back at it being at Caron Country Club two years ago when Guido Migliozzi won in 2019, it also hosted a challenge tour event in 2016, 2015, 2014, and 2013, if you want to go back and look at those as well. But it does almost feel like it's going to be a similar profile of player this week to last week, where distance isn't such an issue, but you need to be straight. You need to keep it in play between the trees, hit greens, and then, and then hold a few putts. Of course, the wind getting up as well. So I'm looking at a fairly similar style of player than we were looking at last week for Qatar. And of course, with a bit of a nod, as I only said there, to South Africans and players who have played well in South Africa before. Obviously, Kenya, not too far away from South Africa. Similar types of grasses, similar sorts of conditions that they're going to be faced with. So South Africans and players that have played well in South Africa, I think, got to be approaching the top of the list as well. How are you approaching picking your team this week? Yeah, I definitely thought the same about players that play well in uh, you know, South Africa, obviously Kenya before, Mauritius. Mm -hmm. it, to play in the heat, to play at altitude, so Kenya is at altitude, it, the South African players are so used to this. Whereas mm -hmm. when us Brits, I would say, go down, we, we can struggle because, like Iona said about chipping, the grass is so much different. So imagine when when you go to Spain and you see that really thick leaf grass, we don't have that here. Um, and there is a different way to play chips. You can make yourself look quite stupid, to be to be honest, if you haven't got the right chipping game. And, and the players that suit that, they're not going to have to change their style, whereas I think Brits are. I also had a quick look at the, the past in Kenya and the type of course which led me to think what's it similar to to on like European tour kind of normally like Valderrama-esque or Spanish Opens whenever you watch that there's trees everywhere so like a somebody that's great off the tee so when I was looking at stats wise for the Kenyan Open and in general and your strokes gained off the tee needs to be really in the positives because um, like we'll see it, it's tight but there are a few drivable par fours. So, I mean, you, you obviously always want this, but a long and, and a straight hitter for me is key this week. And a player that is obviously on form because he won last week and is the best in the field this week at strokes gained off the tee is Rosner. So I didn't put him in last week and <laughs> I was stupid, but he will be in this week. I'm assuming- is Rosner in the field this week? Is he pulled out? I didn't think he was in the field. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm getting yeah. the entry list up. You could have, that's thrown a massive spanner in the works for one of us, because I didn't think he was in oh, the field. Oh, was he not in the, he was in the field. Is he pulled out? Oh, have I done it again? He's not in the field. Oh. He's not like Renzo Vera all over again. Oh, oh. you know what? On, so on the European tour for the men, they can pull out whenever they want. Right. So like, yeah. Yeah. So, ladies, European tour. We have two weeks, and they're actually thinking of reducing it to a week pull out, and people are kicking off because those girls like to get yeah. organised. Um, so, yeah, forgive me, Rosna is out, but that was obviously a late withdrawal. So, not in the not in my team. So, um, who were you thinking then? So, and then I'll come back to a couple of mine. I've got two definites, so I'm going to put yeah. them out there. Guido Migliozzi, absolutely makes sense. I'm a bit annoyed at myself for not giving him more consideration last week because he's absolutely money in this level of tour event. He often rises to the top, contends, and he's mm -hmm. got those couple of wins. So obviously coming off a really good Sunday and the defending champion, albeit from two years ago, he's in there. 
And the second one is someone who you touted very highly last week. I nearly put him in my team, but didn't quite, but he's definitely going in this week. And that's Kurt Kitayama playing really, really well. His four starts this year, he's got gra- missed, uh, made every cut and he's got gradually better and better each week. Top 10 last week. Um, he's got to be in there for me as well. They're my two definites to start with. Yeah, I've got a definite in uh, Kalei Samuja from Finland. Um, yep. He is the he's from the class of 2018 Challenge Tour, and the, the people that qualified in that Bob Mack, uh, Victor Perez, and the, the, amongst many more David Law, they've they've won on tour. He seems to be the only one that hasn't won on the European tour yet, and to come through that class just shows how good he is. Now he. Had a fourth in Dubai recently. So he's on a bit of form. He started quite well last week with the 65, but didn't do much after. Has won a Challenge Tour event at Henan Island, well, in China. So it's the Henan Open. Um, I've been there. It's warm and it's windy. So I'm thinking similar to Kenya. So, yeah, he's, he's a definite for me. I think, all right, I normally go with kind of proven winners, but I think he's got a really good attitude. Um, I think he's going to do well this week. He finished sixth there a couple of years ago as well. Uh, yeah, in this event there you go. course form. Right, who else? I'm going to gonna put George in again. Katsia. Right. Yeah. I know we had a shocker last week, but um, yeah, I think it was the wind. If anyone saw his three jack on Friday, he hit two, I can't think what hole it was on, but I text Kit and I was like, they are the worst two puts I've ever seen. So I'm hoping he just kind of dismisses that and goes, do you know what, wrong side of the draw? Because sometimes as a player, you, you've got to blame other people or other outside agencies. And I think he can do that there. So my reason for him, other than the kind of I put him in last week, from Pretoria, so up high, altitude, South African, used to the grass. He's won six of his seven tournaments in Africa. Okay, so he's won the, uh, on the, in, in Europe, in Portugal, but six out of seven. He came 11th here in 2019, and he's South African. And this type of year for South Africans is prime time. It's their kind of summer. They're used to playing a lot of golf this time of year. So he's, he's definitely going in for me. Kersey is an interesting one for me this week. I I did, uh, my thinking was along the lines of yours where he can just write off last week to an extent. And the thing that tipped it in the balance of me actually not putting him in is looking at his stats. And he, he's just not as straight and as accurate mm. as I'd like someone for the way the course is going to play this week. Having said that, all of the other points you make, I'm absolutely on board with. Yes, he's South African. He shines in that part of the world the being used to playing at a little bit of elevation, altitude as well. There's so many things that go into it, but he's just going to miss out for me. Um, So to fill out the rest of my team, I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into my head and my thinking now, so uh, buckle in. So I've got my two definites. Yeah. And then I haven't got too many South Africans on my shortlist, even though I know I want to have Mm -hmm. one in there. Iona mentioned Justin Harding. He was second there two years ago, but his form has been poor. That second was coming off the back of a win in Qatar as well. So he was flying high at that time. So the two South Africans I've kind of narrowed it down to as my my best of that bunch are Danny Van Tonda and Darren Mm Fickart. Darren Fickart, as we saw, played well in Qatar last week. He's going very well in all the iron play categories. And Danny Van Tonda played in South Africa last week the South African Players Championship and he finished second there losing out in a playoff that guy is an absolute monster on the Sunshine Tour he is a bully he won four times there in the last six months at the back end of last year countless other top tens now my reservation with him is when we had those three events where it was the South African swing on the European Tour last year he went from absolutely bullying fields in the Sunshine Tour to not doing a lot in those three events when the European Tour boys came to play as well. Whereas with Fickart, his form has been good, but not as good as Van Tonder's. 
but also he's shown up a bit more in European tour events and has more European tour experience. And I'm going to go for one of those. So mm -hmm. I've got to decide that. And then, so that leaves me with three other spots and I'm down to five players for those three spots. Yeah. And that's in no particular order. Joachim Hansen, Romain Langosk, Matthias Schwab, Chris Paisley and Jamie Donaldson. Yeah. Any of those names there that I've chucked out at you, you 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 liking disliking any of that? Can you help me make my decision? Yeah. Sway me well, or I, I, Schwab Schwab is up there for me because so a bit of inside info. Um, my mate James Baker caddies for him normally bakes so as caddy for Jamie Donaldson Westwood when he won. Um, where did he win with him? Anyway, he's won with Westwood. Um, and he was not caddying for him last week in Qatar. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this week he is. He's back on the back. He's in Kenya, bakes, great caddy. I think Schwab might have missed him. So that's my inside info. That, that is why that. I'd put Schwab in, just because the team's back together almost. So he said Man's he had visa, yeah, he had like visa, passport issues and everything. So it, he'll be kind of desperate to get back. Jamie Donaldson was in there as well for me. So obviously Bakes caddied for Jamie Donaldson. Interestingly, he caddied for him and they never won. They kept coming second. And they called it a day on the Sunday before US Open qualifying on the Monday. JD went and got in the US Open on the Monday, went on to the Irish Open and won the Irish Open and Bakes wasn't on his back. So yeah, that's a funny story. But yeah, JD's got a little bit of a little bit of form in him, obviously from last week. I wouldn't say Qatar would be a course that would normally suit him because he's an exceptional iron player. If anyone saw that bunker shot last week from as well from the fairway, it was immense. Um, the only thing I've got with Jamie is I know him, and I don't want to do the Iona thing, you know, where you're like, oh yeah, I know him, and I've got a soft spot for him. But stats wise, he's starting to. Uh, especially last year as well. He's obviously over his injury. Um, yeah, so that that would be, that's not a bad one I've got in there also. Um, what about Wilco? You know, big boy, long hitter. I, I, you know what? An event like, I can see Wilco shooting like a 63 and then three rounds in the 70s. I don't know if, this style, of course, as we all know, he, he's an absolute bomber up there with the Shambo distances mm -hmm. off the tee, but without having to go to the gym seven hours a day and down loads of protein shakes to do it. I just don't, he, he'll come good this year and he'll be on tour for a very long time and probably mm. the PGA tour as well uh, and contending in majors. I just don't think this course is the right one for him. And we kind of saw it last week in Qatar where again, the profile of player what we sort of thought it would mm. suit Wilco wasn't in that which isn't to say he can't have a good round there which he did last week at Qatar had one very very good yeah. round is he going to do it consistently over four days on a course that doesn't necessarily suit his incredible skill set and distance my thinking is no he might have one or two very good rounds I don't think he's going to go four good rounds well I thought that until I started looking at last year's stats and he did really well at Valderrama a course okay, which wow. wasn't suiting so I'm thinking get your two iron out plot it round and then yeah when you need to wind it up so I, I might he, he's it's either him or uh, Jamie Donaldson for me so um who have I got? Very I've got the end of the golfing spectrum right there yeah the, it is isn't it Jamie will be buzzing that I've compared the two yeah. yeah. So my definites are Katsia, um, Kitayama, mm -hmm. um, Migalotsi, um, Samuja, and then there's two. But I think I'm going to go with Schwab just because um, yep. that's given me a little bit of confidence. Bakes caddying for him. There are a few random ones that you could maybe look into that did come into, into my consideration. You've got a few core specialists, I suppose. That um, so, Ritthammer on there. Two, yeah, yeah Ritthammer and um, who was the other one? 
Hayden Porteous. Porteous, yeah. I also had Sebastian Soderberg, but I don't know. Yeah. I think COVID, since he got COVID, his performances haven't been too great. But yeah, you, you do have a, a few core specialists. Hayden Porteous, yeah, like you say, another one I've, I kind of had down. Um, I would put Ritthammer above Porteous just because he's been playing a bit more um, yeah. for me. Uh, I assume Hayden's been playing Sunshine Tour, though, so I don't know too much about his record down there. He but, is on quite a long missed cut streak at the moment, yeah. looking at his record. But to put it in context at that course, he was 12th in the European Tour event in 2019, and he won the Challenge Tour event in 2015. For Ritthammer, those stats read, uh, this is all in the Challenge Tour event era. So in the four years that there was uh, a Challenge Tour event there, Rit Hammers finished 10th, 7th and 3rd. So with it has course form, but in a Challenge Tour field and a few years ago now, I mean, for me, Rit Hammer and Porteous looking at that course form, I wouldn't go near them for a six-man fantasy team. But if you were looking at the betting odds and you could get some three figures on these guys, they're very much worth a little dabble each way as a bet rather than perhaps in a six man fantasy team would be my sort of reading of that. Yeah. And I would think the same about the Justin Harding thing, really. Yeah. Just, just maybe. Yeah. If you, if you can get some decent odds on him. But I think course form is important. Well, no, I don't know if it's as important as as stats and playing and playing well, um, to be quite honest, which is why I'm going to try and keep with with that formula. Um, yeah, and keep keep a few players in, really. Trying to think of yeah. it in terms of my fantasy football. I'm forever swapping in and out, in and out. And it's, no, come on. There's a reason you put them in, like for Kurt Kitayama. When I put him in with really strong fields, you've got to stay with him when the field's maybe not as strong. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm going for in mine. My only worry is with Guilio is um, normally he kind of goes win nowhere. And then he's very much like this. It's not like form is sustainable with him, but he's a winner. Um, and like you say, in that type of field, it, it's, it, it'll be buzzing to get back to Kenya. You know, when you... You know, he couldn't defend last year. And that's, you know, it's not great, is it? You know, you want to go back as defending champion and, and to a course as well that you've won on. He's going to do that this year. So hopefully that pressure won't get to him. But actually, talking about his interviews, it's what he kind of likes, isn't it? That pressure. Well, this is it. And it's like you say, when he gets in contention, it's when he plays his best golf. That's what I've noticed watching him. And sometimes if he isn't quite at the top end of the leaderboard, he can fizzle out a bit. So hopefully he makes a fast start. He's certainly going to be in my team. All right, I'm, I'm going to commit myself to my six yeah. right now. It's, we're recording this on Monday morning, so I'm going in early before yeah. uh, we've seen too much. I've just done just, my own. Just gonna... check the weather, Kit. I've checked the weather. Oh, it's yeah, continuous east, northeast wind. Same direction, same strength, weather's the same all week. So fingers and crossed. Shouldn't that remains. Burn on the wrong side of a draw. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going, I mentioned Migliozzi, Kitayama. I'm going to go Matthias Schwab, Jamie Donaldson. And then oh, it's Paisley or Langask. Langask has the course form, Paisley has the actual form i'm gonna go paisley like you said stick with him he did well for me last week no reason yeah. to take him out and then in my pick between fickart or van tonda i'm going fickart they're my six yeah so i've got five so i need to find another one um so you, you can leave that till later in the week you we, we did you don't have to completely commit now we'll let you uh f five's enough to commit to now good right so once again starts on thursday morning so it's a 72 whole event. But weirdly, they're playing in the same course next week. So will we need to do this again next week, Kit, or can I have a week off? Well, we are going to need to do it again, because even though we've got back-to-back -back events at Karen in Kenya, of course, next week's a WGC as well. So okay. we've got WGC Dell match play over in the States. The top 64 available players from the world rankings will be teeing it up. So an absolutely all-star field and big, big money and points. Next week, you'll be able to select from either tournament 
but we would recommend highly you load in six players at the match play because that's where the big rewards are. We'll be focusing on that next week as well, but we'll also give a little bit of a nod to what's gone on in Kenya and what that means for the second Kenya event as well, if you're interested in betting or anything like that. So a bit of an interesting dynamic, two European tour events next week, the second one being in Kenya, again, same venue, pretty much the same field it will be, but that big WGC as well, match play over in the States. Okay then, so double the research, kind of. So everybody, I hope this video has helped you. It's going to be a tough week to select your six. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people mixing it up this week. But double points for your captain. That's really important. So thanks all for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please click the like button, click the subscribe button. We want to, we want to hear from you. We want your comments. Um, yeah. Kit's clearly a bit better than me after last week. So I, I need a good week this week. So come on now. Right, everybody, have a good one. Get those team of six in. Starts Thursday morning and get some points on the board. Cheers, Kit. Cheers, Sophie.